My name is Lawrence Ray, also known as LRW3, and today I got two of my guys here with me. We're going to start by introducing my guy to the left, and then we're going to have our guest of honor introduce himself as well. So if you would, tell the people who you are. I am Chris Schumpher, CEO of Schumpher Photography. Y'all can check me out on IG at CEO underscore Schumpher Photography, also on Facebook, Chris Schumpher. Hey, like I said real quick, this is my guy Chris, man. Y'all see him in all the, all the videos. Y'all like the ciphers. Of course, he has a hand in that. Um, definitely check out him and his work. Excellent, excellent work. My guy, introduce yourself for us. Yes, sir. The rising recording artist coming out of middle Georgia. I go by the name of E-Club. Mr. Eric can love you better and all that. Yes, talk sir. that talk. Talk that talk. Pleasure yes, to sir. have both of you all here, man. Um, for, for those of you all who maybe aren't familiar with E-Club, which you should be because he was just speaking of Chris and his involvement in the cypher, he is actually the one who brought E-Club to the cypher. Um, so talk to us about the, the second 100,000 view cypher on Talk To Me Nice. I'd be wrong if I didn't throw that promotion in there. Talk to us about that experience and that was that your first time doing something like that? Yeah, very first cypher. So, so now that Chris is here, man, you ain't, gotta, you ain't gotta shoot him no bail. What did he tell you to expect when you came for the cypher? Hey, he said, just bring it. He said, El gonna have a bunch of the heavy hitters there, and I vouch for you. He said, but I know what you can do, so wasn't too much, you know. All right, Chris, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Did he do what he, uh, did, did he earn the cosign from you? Definitely. Um, I feel like, like I said, that's just something that man can do again, you know what I'm saying? No, that's fine, that's if fine. That's something, if, if that was something new. No, that's fine. One thing about Chris, man, when Chris talks, you listen, man, because Chris don't, he don't give pity points to nobody. He wasn't just going to say, I got this guy if he didn't have somebody, man. But no, I give you credit, man. Like I said, it was your first time in the cypher. You definitely showed up. You definitely uh, you definitely killed it. You were the first person bold enough to, to call for the chant in the cypher. So that right there, man, get you some cool points, man. Now, I Appreciate definitely that. liked it. I like what you did, as well as everybody else who... Um, who's watching the cypher saying nothing but good things about you. So for your first time, we clearly couldn't tell till you told us that, man. Oh, uh, so now, I guess you already kind of told people though, E-Club, when I first heard it, I'm not gonna front, I just thought it was just a random acronym, mm -hmm. but you kind of told it already for the people who didn't catch it again, yeah. tell everybody what E-Club stands for. Eric can love you better. Now, <laughs> were, we on, were we on our LL Cool J when we did that? or Most definitely. So that, that was the exact reason you did it? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, definitely paying homage to the people who came before me, but I thought I can give my own little spin for the new generation. All right, okay. So, so, and I know you had dreams of like being a performer and an entertainer from an early age, correct? Yes, sir. Um, so, let me see how I want to word this question. Oh. <laughs> uh, are you able, are you, are you like a, when you're a performer, because you call yourself a performer, so are you able to dance and stuff like that? What, what does all that entail when we call ourselves a performer? Oh, I try to give the best show possible. You know, I want you to remember this for years to come. But yeah, I definitely dance, sing, you know, I even act a little bit too, you know, in my sets, so. Oh, you act a little bit? What you be acting on? I mean, you know, whatever it is. And if it's a love song, I try to like, portray that. I want the crowd to really feel that and be in my shoes as close as possible, you know? I like that, I like that. Oh, well. So, talk to me. Because I know a main point um, that you really attribute to who, are, who you're becoming now is a mindless behavior concert. <laughs> um, and was it Augusta, Georgia, where you yeah, saw that? Augusta. I got to ask, man. Yeah. Why were we at a mindless behavior concert, first off? Man, you know, I was a young black kid during that time still. Uh, I was loving all the young kids that I could see on TV. I used to go home to 106 Park and watch all these young kids around my age. Uh, Jacquees, Issa, Jacob Lattimore. That Issa, 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 well, Issa was fire. I thought Issa was going to blow before man, Jacquees. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. the star back then. Man, he did get signed first. You know, it was, I think it was Interscope. Yeah, yeah was, he was doing his thing. He turned up. Yeah, I remember that era. So we ended up going to Mindless Behavior concert. Yeah, it was a scream tour actually back in the day when they brought it back. You know, I had it was Diggy and Autumn, but you know, Mindless Behavior they were headlining. Well, you you saying some names I ain't yeah, heard of. Diggy, Diggy. <laughs> this man Diggy. just dropped Diggy out here, man. So, oh, uh, okay. So, what about that concert really stood out to you, man? That that just said, yo, it, I think I can do this just like they are. Literally that, you know, I felt like I could see myself, um, you know, up there on stage doing what they do. I love the music. I was. Uh, performing around that time and then you know definitely all the girls screaming and stuff going to the front. Man, that's never a bad reason to get what? you motivated. Never a bad reason at all. <laughs> definitely. So um, after we left that concert mm -hmm. what what was the follow-up after that? Like where did when did we lock in necessarily like all right I think I can do this. When did we start putting that plan into action though? All right, ASAP. And I was writing songs on the way back, you know, home, but literally. Not uh, in the back seat going man, crazy. Literally man. pulling up all the beats on YouTube everything just started writing but 
I went home like probably a week after that. I made my home studio for the oh, first yeah. time. Let's talk about that. So, because mm -hmm. I think everybody growing up, if you started music in yeah. your teens, we all had the house set up because we couldn't mm -hmm. afford to go to the studio. Let's be real. We were else were we going to record at? Exactly. So, you know, me personally, I didn't do the, the, the closet set up mm -hmm. too heavily. I was always just sitting there. I was lazy. I was at the desk, man. I wasn't trying to get in the closet. Oh, okay. But talk to us how detailed your closet setup was. Was it just like a mic in the middle of the closet? Did like you move all your clothes out the closet yeah. and this was truly your studio? Uh -huh. Or like put us... Open up the closet for us. Let us picture how this closet studio looked. Oh, it was very cramped. I can say that. You know, I had a little twenty-five dollar mic from Walmart. Uh, and I was recording on Audacity, so Audacity. it was very basic. You know, but Audacity was hard. But I was a miscraft baby. Audacity was too oh, okay. complicated for me, man. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I couldn't know. get it. Maybe I didn't want to. But miscraft was too easy. I don't know. So I could but. Get it. Yeah, opposite for me, mixed craft. I don't know. Oh, that's crazy. The twenty-five dollar mic era was crazy. That was some yeah. of the best. People try to play that era. Those were some of the best. I had a ten dollar mic, man. It yeah. was some of the clearest vocals to yeah. this day still I ever produced, man. Yeah. Don't don't sleep on that. So, yes, talk to us about this. Um, about the closet studio, man. Yeah. Um, we did that for what five years? You? Yeah, a little. About five, six years. Yes, sir. Did um, we? Were we going to a studio in between? And it was strictly nothing but closets. Uh, really, you know, just trying to hone my skills. I was, you know, in the closet still in my house, pushing clothes aside to record. And then so, I well, hold on, we didn't even clear the closet out. You, you, hey man, it's still a small closet. I needed somewhere to put my clothes. You were calling in between the summer wardrobe, is <laughs> yeah. what it sounded like. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't Literally. nothing wrong with that. But, but you know, I have friends too who have studios. And oh, I'm okay. Go there, experiment. So, as far as quality at this time, like I said, my little $10 mic had excellent quality. No, so what was your quality like coming out of the, the closet studio? Hey, everybody had to start somewhere, right? But it was decent, you know, so I heard worse, but it was, it was decent. It sounded like it wasn't that good. You ain't got a lot of me. <laughs> it was decent. Yeah, yeah, but was it good? Now, of course, when I, when I asked the quality, I don't mm. want you comparing it, obviously, to what you're able to do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just comes with learning and, and being able, even... Now, even back then, you could get the same vocals, but mm -hmm. you just know how to mix them better and things like that, True. or you have access to better equipment. True. But for that era, more so, what was the quality like? Oh, yeah, okay, it, it was raw and it wasn't the best. I wouldn't put it out now, let's say it like that. Okay, that's fair. But even back <laughs> then, I don't think we necessarily cared. I mean, I, I don't know about you, I personally mm -hmm. didn't care. It was okay. just about, I just wanted y'all to hear me rapping. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't, yeah. it's not, no, this song is not ready for production. <laughs> this is just, hey, y'all, check out what I just did at the crib. Like, that's all it really was for. Let me tell you what I did, my, my first setup. So, uh, paint the picture for us yeah, now. Was man, you in the closet yeah. or what was your setup at? No, nah, we was in a corner. A corner. You had, so the I had a desk. I had a desk right here, centered. I had the focus right, yeah. and I started with the focus right, the basic one, the gray one. Okay. So, you know how your mic has the phone behind it, mm -hmm. like you sound, man. You know how your mattress had the had the phone. Yeah. You took so the mattress. Had, the... We took the mattress. Got oh. a cardboard. Got some cardboard. Curved it. Got it to stay. Put it behind the mic. That's how that's that's how we block our sound right there. Hey, that's fire though. That's that's. Yeah. I mean, if you being real, it looks better with the phone. But yeah. honestly, that's. That's all it actually is. Yeah, really. Right. So, head of the game. So, what type of music was you putting out? What was your quality yeah. like? Now that you don't broke your mattress, what were you sleeping at after the mattress? Because, like, was it hey, your look, mattress look, or whose mattress? That, yeah, that corner I took off. You can't sleep right there. You can't, <laughs> sleep, you can't sleep in that little. You got to sleep at an angle. That's right. it. Yeah, Ignore that nah, one. But the quality was good because I was already working with my uncle, you know. Yeah. Your country bang. Yeah, man. Yeah. But he was already teaching me how to, you know, how to record myself. Mm. So, just like you, I started out paying a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Mm. Well, even paying him, he, he wouldn't charge me the most, but I hated paying somebody for something I could have learned. Facts, facts. True, true. So that's why I got a whole studio in the house now. Yeah. A real one. <laughs> yeah, doing your thing. By the way, if you're in the middle Georgia area and you're looking for somewhere to record, I know that's the main thing. I sit down with a lot of artists. I'm glad, mm. free promotion right here. I'm glad you just brought that up. Yeah, he got out. a studio, man. Yeah. Tap in with him. We already told you where to find him at. Book your studio time, man. Get in there. No more closet studios, no more corner <laughs> studios. We got somewhere you can go, man. Yes, Tap in with him. So, back to you. Let's, let's Let's get to the we, we've been recording now for like five six years in the closet what was the turning point for you to be like it's time for me to do a little bit more than the closet uh, when I started getting some recognition uh, coming out of high school I dropped a little song on SoundCloud started getting some some you know, uh, interactions from people uh, all over the state and it took me to the point where like I need to get some better quality so I can actually go perform I wanted to do that and you know just really feel confident in myself Okay, okay. So, so we do this, and now it's like, okay, I think I'm ready to commit to the music. But to put people on this timeline, like you said, you were graduating um, high school, so mm -hmm. now 
you you you're ready to decide your next step in music, yes. but natural, you know, regular life. Yeah. It's time to decide what you're gonna be doing now, cause we don't have the the high school yep. confines to keep us in this box. Yeah. And usually, of course, it's it's one of two things people are gonna do, like fresh out of high school. Okay. You either gonna go to the military, yep. or you gonna go to college. Mm -hmm. You wanted to do neither. Neither. <laughs> First off, why were you so sure? Let's just start there. Okay. Why were you so sure military or college just wasn't for you at that time? I mean, I was always, you know, like. I think as early as middle school, I was always like reaching out to colleges and stuff, trying to see what I wanted to do, to set up for my future. If music was never like really, if it was just a hobby, you know, type of thing. And um, you know, I experimented with that. wasn't really interested in much of it. You know, I didn't want to waste nobody's time, my parents' money, anything like that. And then, uh, yeah, really, military wasn't it. You know, I'm a military brat, so I grew up knowing the military like the back of my hand. And yeah. I had, you know, I'm the youngest of five boys, so three of my brothers are all enlisted now. You know what I'm saying? So. And of course, thank them for their service yes, as sir. well. As somebody, I'm not going to front, it takes a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And what you did wasn't easy. Like most people, they're, they're at college. They don't know why they're there. They're, gener they're, yeah. they're majoring in a, something they don't care about. They're only there because mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. I'm here because even me, I'm not going to lie. I went to college, not because I wanted to, but mm -hmm. what else was I going What else I'm about to be for doing? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you did the same? I did. Um you know, that's all we taught when we come at our age, we same yeah. age. And, um, all we taught, like you said, college, uh, college or military. But in my case, my mom was just pushing that, pushing that. Mm -hmm. I started out at VSU, mm -hmm. out of state, whatever. I wanted to go for mass media. I wanted mm -hmm. to learn how to go and produce music. Okay. But when I started taking the classes, they doing these intro classes, they teach you definitions. You're not getting no hands on. And that's funny uh, for people, if you haven't seen it, I'm not trying to cross more videos, but when I sat down with my man Fule DC, he was an engineer who also uh, went to school for engineering mm -hmm. up in Atlanta. He said the same thing. Like, they teach you all these definitions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make you a better engineer. They just teach you the definition. You know what the, you know what it is, but it doesn't teach you how to be good with it. Sure. And that was the disconnect where people was like, oh, and even people not even music related, just going, I, I know a lot of people who went for general degrees that... You went because you didn't know what else to do. Now you got a degree that honestly you don't. The job you got after college, you didn't need a degree to do anyway. Yeah, so sure. you low key wasted money and time to end up where you were gonna end up anyway. Yeah. But you just did that because what else were you gonna do? And exactly. So for you, I must say I can say it did help you networking. And what the crazy thing is, when I was down there, everybody I was meeting with was from here, making one of Robins. I met so many people from making one Robinson. It's crazy. Cause you're not you're from you're not from up here, are you? No, I'm from about Austin. Yeah. See and everybody from making and one Robinson would coming down there to go to school. True. Yeah. See that's dope. See that worked for you, mm -hmm. but. You know, if we was already from making and one Rob was going down to Valdosta, mm -hmm. how much how much value would it have done if we just gonna end up with the same connections and making and oh making and one Robbins? But that yeah. worked for you. That actually something that ended up good for you. Nah, but never. for you, just like I said, like me and him both acknowledged, we went to college not because we wanted to, just what we were gonna do. And yeah. even military, as somebody, I'm in the military as um in the in the Army Reserves. I tell everybody, military is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be there. Please don't sign up mm -hmm. because you're gonna hate every minute of it. That's not it's the same. It's it's a worse thing like college because at least it's yeah. college. If you just showed up and signed up because you didn't know what to do, and you realize after your first semester you don't want to do this, yeah. you just drop out. Mm -hmm. Ain't no such thing as dropping out the military. You signed <laughs> nah, up yeah. for three years minimum if you <laughs> yeah, active duty. Sure. Reserves is an eight year contract. Mm -hmm. There's no. I'm tired of this. I'm done. You're, you're stuck, and that's even worse because I know people. I, I'm yeah. in the military. I see people who. What else was I supposed to do? My mom told me I had to do something out of high schools. So I just joined the, the military yeah. and I hate every minute of it. Now, for those who love it, that's great. But if it's something that you already knew yeah. you weren't going to like, it's another strong thing, especially people don't understand when you come from a military yeah. family, how hard it is to be the one yeah. to say, I don't want It's like the black sheep of the family. Everybody's talking about the military. And you just sitting there, you ain't mm -hmm. like I know a lot of guys who don't want to be in the just don't want to be in the military. Yeah. They just hear my mm -hmm. grandpa was in the army, mm -hmm. my dad was in the army. Yeah, I just had to, I just got to come do my time. Like it's not a it's not a jail sentence. Nobody forced mm -hmm. you to be here. True. Yeah. So for you to know that and say flat out, I'm not doing either option. I mean, that takes a lot. I'm not going to front. Yeah, no, it's definitely a bold move. But I can definitely say, you know, I had the support behind me. That's what I really appreciate. It's just uh, you know. Now, I, I, okay. let me ask you this. When you decided you weren't going to do it, did you put them looking back? Because now you, it's a very strong decision. Yeah. 
Was that your thinking behind it, or you just 18 and just like, I ain't want to do that? I ain't just didn't want to do it. I, I don't know. Maybe I was a little ahead of my, t- a little ahead of my time at that time. I don't know. Uh, I think right now, looking back, I've made a good decision. Uh, just That's kind of what my artistry kind of shows. You know, I want people to really follow their dreams and not really be afraid to do something different, you know? And definitely do what's meant for you. That's yeah, why I try to portray my music. That's you know? dope. I feel like anybody, when it comes to enjoying and respecting artists, mm-hmm. we really appreciate people who practice what they preach. Yes, sir. So, yes. like, even in that decision alone, if somebody didn't know you, but that's what you stand on as an artist, yes, they have proof that you actually do that. You you decided that from 18, you weren't doing neither. Yes. But still, just because you decided at 18 don't mean that conversation went well. So, oh, yeah, man. Talk to us about the first time you went in there with your parents and said, hey, Ma, I ain't going to college. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to the Army. But check this out, man. I'm going to be a rapper. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Tell me how that went. Uh, exactly how you would think. Uh, most people, uh, I don't know how most people would be, but my parents, they, they, they were pretty shocked at first, of course. And really, they just wanted me to prove them, like prove it to them. So I had to make a few songs for my parents to be, you know, God, what, me. What, what songs allowed your parents to say, you know what, uh, you, might, you might be alright. What were these songs you made? <laughs> I made a song called Freak Show. Uh, it was about... Hold on, you made a song called Freak Show to prove yeah. to your mom you <laughs> didn't even go to college. Yeah, yeah. Because look, she told me, she was like, hey, you need to make a song that's fast beat. I made a lot of R&B stuff, a lot of slow stuff. She's like, you need something that's up and they can play in the clubs. I'm like, what type of clubs you talking about? She said, you know, they're popping in strip clubs. They're popping anywhere. So I took that advice, went to the studio, found me a beat. Came out with a hit. I, I need you. I need you to paint this picture for yeah. me. As, as mom, I got this song. Mm-hmm. I'm about to cut it on. Yeah. What's going through your head as you about to play freak show for your mama, man? Nervous, man. Nervous wreck. But was you cussing a lot in that song? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm growing at that point. But it, that, that's she, look, <laughs> she looked at me. Yeah, that's different. Though. That's yeah. so awkward, yeah, still yeah, though, yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. Still. It, it was. But look, it, after the end of that song, she was like, "This song is marketable. I can not." If she wasn't my mom, looking at her like a manager. I, and and it, it of works, course, for context, know. like like I met your mom, she's very yeah. analytical. Like she's mm-hmm. down, she don't care about that. It makes sense. It's black and white. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, all right, it's it's a little awkward. That's yeah. you don't even care. That's my son. That's yeah. a little weird. Nah, yeah. I don't care. This is what I needed you to do. You checked yeah. off all these boxes. That's cool with me. That's so. dope. But I need to know what's some of these lyrics in Freak Show, man. What was the hook on Freak Show, man? I don't care. Ooh. I just need to know what exactly you was bold I enough said, to play uh, for your mama. The hook is like I said, girl, we be up and smoke. Take a talk. You look like a Leah. You rock the boat. I love the way you shake that booty up and down the pole. I throw them dollars up. I do turk it, turk it, turk it like a freak show. And then I keep okay. going. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. That ain't too bad. That's not what I was picturing. I like that though. Is, is that song? Why you just sung it? That song out somewhere still? It's coming out on my new EP uh, this Christmas. Okay, okay. Yes, dope, dope. Mm-hmm. What was it? Because you said you had a couple of songs. What was the other song you played to get them? Oh, uh, um. I had a song with my brother. I don't think that's an idea come out on SoundCloud. It was some quick rap I did with my brother. It's called Doing Well or something like that. Mm, okay. it, it's still out there. I'm pretty sure people can find it on my SoundCloud page. So so we, we dropped Freak Show. We yeah. dropped Doing Well. Mm-hmm. And mom said, all right, I'm going to let you do this. Yeah, she's like, I, she's saying I was serious. And then that would start the whole run of you know open mic nights and stuff like that all around the state. So you was like... Every what is open mic nights? Usually that's what Tuesdays or or you was yeah. just like all week. Girl. Yeah, all week, every day. You know, I go up somewhere in Georgia go perform. So <laughs> and with moms, when she told you you could do this, she had a couple of requirements for you though too, right? Yeah. What was those requirements she made you do? Uh, well, one definitely gotta have a job. You know, I had to fund my own career if I was gonna be in school. Which makes sense. What yeah. was you working at during this time? I worked everywhere. Uh, I started at Aeropostale, and I went to, you know, Journeys. I was at Dairy Queen for some, like... Was it, was it, she didn't really care about the money you was making. It was just a responsibility, I would assume. She just wanted you to, like... Yeah, it might have been my own bills. Oh, yeah. Bill, you know, because yeah. I'm not, you know, at school or nothing. But, yeah, definitely took care of myself. It taught me how to take care of myself, you know, and fund my music career, too, you know? Dope, dope. And what was the other requirement? Was there another requirement? Yeah, no, definitely work and I know she wanted me just to eat, sleep and breathe music. I know that had to be consistent. Facts. Overall. Yes, sir. So your mom's um and like I, I always like to give credit for this because this is like I always tell people it's easy for me to say I support you, 
when mm-hmm. it costs me nothing. It doesn't cost me time, doesn't cost me money, it yeah. doesn't cost me effort. So it's real easy to be like, man, I support what you got going on. Yeah. But it's no way I can really, you can't really quantify that because yeah. it's nothing you can really track. True. But I, I got to give your mom credit because your mom was a first sergeant mm-hmm. in the military. So everybody, you in the military, you, you know what comes along with being first sergeant. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of self-explanatory. Not only was she a music lover, she believed in you enough to build you an in-house studio not like no play studio like this little corner it was like a legit studio yeah man i was blessed i didn't see it coming it was really i asked her because she was moving and she was you know building her house i'm like hey just throw a studio in there for me i could stay with you and she took me seriously oh, she took you. <laughs> so talk to us about how how in depth was this studio like oh man it was what you would think so she had her dance room pretty much a mirror wall and she'll go in there and dance and stuff i'll go in there and rehearse but then i had like a little closet end up turning that to like my little engineering booth area and she tore down another closet and made that the actual booth so that's fire i had a real dance studio that's fire yo yes, so sir. did you i'm assuming we upgraded from that 25 dollar mic too we had oh, a, yeah. You got yeah. state of the art equipment off in there man yes sir not state of the art but you know hey it's, like, hey <laughs> hey, we know what it is. We know what it is. So let me see my next question, man, because you're killing it right now, man. Um, speaking of your mom, like I said, your mom was obviously very influential, always been very supportive of you. Yes. Is your mom your actual manager or what is that like? So, yeah, now nah, she is a, a momager, but no, nah, she's not. I'm not signed to anybody or anything. Not no management. Uh, she's, she's my number one supporter. And she pretty much just looks over, you know, uh, she's gives me advice on a lot of stuff like i say okay, that ain't nothing wrong with that basically a consultant yeah yeah, yeah. okay Definitely. team in club just letting you know what's best um let me ask you this as, as an upcoming artist when do you feel is the right time to get a manager um, I would definitely say from the beginning, you know, I would love somebody to grow with me, you know, I'd definitely get to know me uh, behind the business or as a person too, so that helps with the business and decisions moving forward. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, back to your mom real quick, because yeah. um, I know, like you said, she consults with you a lot. Mm-hmm. How was that relationship being mom and son and then talent and... I mean, she's not your manager, but she's basically your de facto manager. Oh, and, yeah. So, how was that goal when it's one of those, like... You all have a different opinion on mm-hmm. what E Club, the artist, should yeah. be doing. I um, mean, it's just what best suits the business at the end of the day. You know, that's that's kind of what it comes down to. Can't really be, you know, Sheldon sitting as a son at the end of the day. But of course, I, of course. You know, other than that, it's like, hey, I got to do this. this. Is what I'm feeling. It's my heart's going to. I believe this will, you know, excel my career in some way. And then, you know, not to matter ten, she makes sense. She'll agree. If not, you know, it's just. Agree to disagree, but she's my mom. She loves me, you know. Of course, of course. Um, so, speak to us um, about some of the more important relationships that you formed in your career once you put your full focus into it. Um, definitely, uh, my boy Chris right here, man. Big supporter. Uh, met him through with Silk. Yeah. Yo, when I first I, I met, well, actually, I ain't meet him. So some kind of way I ended up following this dude on Instagram, right? E Club, right? So I used to come across a lot of opportunities in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and I came across his. I think Silk was your manager at the time, yeah, or something similar to it. Yeah. So Silk was a DJ, mm-hmm. and I met Silk at American Deli, right? Oh wow, yeah. But yeah, anyways, I used to go. <laughs> I used to go. Uh, I used to go all the way to Atlanta, like, and I came across the opportunity for people, somebody to come perform. And I, and um, I noticed this dude. I'm like, all right, I like to do music. He in the area, so let me just. I think I inboxed him. Like yeah. I told him to call. I sent him my number. I said, "Hey, call me." Mm-hmm. So when I finally got touch with him, I was like, hey, "You know, they doing performances up here in Atlanta. You know, mm-hmm. and um, I guess this is what they charge or whatever." Mm-hmm. And you said you was gonna reach out to Silk. Yeah. And still ended up saying, um, "Well, we don't pay to perform. We get paid to perform." Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> ain't, nothing, <laughs> so, ain't nothing wrong with that talk. But, that talk, Silk. Tell him what it was. Yeah, man. for sure. So I'm like, okay, cool. And that was that was that. And then fast forward, what about a couple months ago? Yeah. He be calling me, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, hey, you know, I think you called me while I was already in Atlanta. I was at, I was in my uncle's studio, okay. thing, and you were saying you want a video like that next day. So I had to, I think I had to end up going back home and then dropping right back up that next morning. Ooh. I'm like, hey, where we going? He was like, oh, we going, um, want a QC in yeah. the studio. Snake right, I'm like QC, like QC, QC, like QC, like, QC, <laughs> like, like quality control. Yeah. He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, got kind of silent for a minute. Like, 
Wait a minute. <laughs> nah, that's fire. And Chris, I get Chris's credit, man. Yeah. Before I met you, he spoke very, very highly of you. Because, you know, he was like, man, I got my guy E Club. You know, I'm, I'm hearing him. But I'm like, all right, man. It's right. different when you put like a name. Because he mentioned mm -hmm. you, but I never knew, knew yeah. who you were. So it's For different sure. when you put the face to a name. Like, oh, this is the guy Chris been speaking very highly of. Man, look, so. I'm going to tell you, like, the first time like we was around each other, that's that session. It was an eight hour session. Mm -hmm. I ain't know when he said eight hours. I'm like, what are we doing? Videos? What are we doing? <laughs> eight like, hours. Bro, yeah, this yeah. is an eight hour uh, studio session. Studio session. This straight mm -hmm. songs. Like, I, I mm -hmm. sat there and watched this dude make, what you made, eight songs? Yeah. I sat there and watched you do make eight songs in eight hours, not having to pull out a notepad or a phone to read no lyrics. Just go. Let me ask you this. It's off, it's off topic, but I got to ask. What type of studio artist are you? Are you the guy? Who likes to come to the studio, like just just get in the vibes and then create, or do you come like fully prepared and you just need to record? Oh, I'm fully prepared. I appreciate yeah. that. I, I'm the same guy. One, because yeah. I'm cheap, so yeah. I'm like, yo, I need hey. I need my money's worth now. If you For like real. like a lot of artists who are starting <laughs> off, they see the futures and people. That's who they credit. Like, oh, I just want to go to the studio, yeah. catch the vibes, and right from there. Mm -hmm. Future can do that because his label's paying for the studio time. Exactly. Right. You the one paying sixty, seventy, hundred dollars, whatever you at, whatever studio you. At. Yep. Nah, bro, I need my money's worth. I'm prepared yes, when sir. I get here. So I like to hear that you're the same way. Oh, yeah. I don't play, man. Go in there and just, I want to impress everybody too. You know what I'm saying? It's all a show, but I want to get the best, you know, outcome with the song. I want to perform it right. So definitely going to prepare. Heck, I'll rehearse the song. I'll change words before I go in there. So when I just go in there yeah. and lay it down, I and that's professionalism busy. too. Yes, like, sir. yeah, they, he not coming, he not wasting time. Because even yeah. the engineer, I know, you know, I'm yeah. friends with a lot of engineers. They be like, yo, I don't really care if somebody want to come in here and waste my time. It's easy money for me. I ain't got nothing sure, to mix sure. down at the end. I'm yeah. just like, you still pay for whatever exactly. you decide to do, what you decide to do. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I know you mentioned Chris. Uh, who yeah. else? I know y'all brought up Silk. Oh, who, yeah. Who else? I don't know if you want to go more in depth on his relationship with you, or if not, was there anybody else influential for you? I mean, yeah, well, definitely Silk. Uh, you know, I was introduced to him by my mom with his studio, you know, out there in Warner Robins. But uh, he showed me the way. He introduced me to Chris, um, with, working with QC, my boy Doc Hum up there. Um, but yeah, he showed me the way. How'd you get tied in with QC? So through my guy Silk, uh, he actually told me, uh, hey, I got a, you know, showcase I think, you know, you should do. And I was like, all right, you know, because someone was like, hey, man, I'm trying to get with QC. Whatever you can do, find me. That's the label you like. You wanted to sign with him, or you just wanted yeah. to talk. Nah. What, what about QC made you just like be like, that's the people I want. I like the way like you know they stand as a family, like they solid and they take care of their artists. You know, um, just from looking at some of their past artists that they signed, and how they changed their lives from being you know same age as me and being social media influencers or whatever, and just really helping them find themselves in their lane, their sound as an artist, and make sure you know the paperwork and everything is right too. I like that. I like you're very you're very good in your answers. Even like I said, back to your decision to not do college and military, even to this, it's very it's very good answers that like even if you and that might be the military because <laughs> you come from a military family, sure. you you got to know what you mean and mean what you say. Yeah. Like so. as long as you can defend your position, most people are gonna let it go. Like okay, I like what you say. This is why you want to go to QC. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Like you answered the question. That's fire. That's so he tapped you in with QC, and you actually. Uh, went on tour with them, am yeah. I correct? Yes, so sir. it, it sounds like the QC connection is working out a little bit. How, how was that as far as going on tour with them and, and that experience? Oh yeah, life was a blast, man. It was like a real first tour experience. You know, we did, uh, what, I think 13 cities. Hmm. I went to a few shows, uh, you know, I went to New York, Texas, Florida, and so on. But went to a lot of, uh, a lot of states, a lot of shows, got to, uh, grow my fan base out there in New York was crazy. I gotta say that it was a vibe. First time out there, I think I had a show. I was in New York for 24 hours, only had one show, but I had to fly there from the A, do that show that night, fly back and do another show in Atlanta. Like, literally, it That's was crazy. crazy. He was living that lifestyle right there. Oh, yeah. So I, got question, I got a question for you, Claude, right here. Uh, so, that, <laughs> so like, with the QC thing, was it the original QC lineup? You know, they had the Jose Guapo, mm -hmm. you know, the Rich the Kid, that, that original QC when they yeah. started. Was it that, or was it like the new QC, the little oh, baby? Oh, no, yeah, no, nah, new QC. It had, you know, uh, Metro Mars, shout out to him. Duke Deuce was out there, some of the shows, too, you know. Um, but uh, it was some of the new artists at this okay, time, okay. but no, it's definitely cool. It was the opportunity they had, you know, little artists to come out from Georgia or either in that state to, you know, open up for them. So. As far as projects you have out um, in relation to your artistry, you have three projects out to date. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what are the name of each of your projects? Uh, so I dropped a, a EP, I think, in 2020. It was called To You, uh, to you From E. 
that was on SoundCloud, and then I dropped a mixtape from my fans last year on SoundCloud as well. It's called For My Fans. And then recently, I just dropped my debut album last October, and I've been promoting it all year. It's understandable, uh, Eric versus E Club. Now, when we go into the name of these tapes, is there um, something specific as to what you decide these tapes to be, or how do we think of these names? Oh yeah, definitely from what I was going through. Uh, to you from E, I was going through a breakup, you know, at that time. So I kind of wanted to, you know, shout out. Uh, the person I was in a relationship with at the time, you know, kind of just... You say her name on the tape or no? Nah, I ain't saying on the tape. Okay, okay, I was about to say that. No, you know. No, no, okay. free, no, no free promo. <laughs> I said no free no promo free now. Pro don't, let it, don't let it go big now. She's going to be suing you for half no, of that. for real. But she's going to bring up this interview. See, y'all see, he said I was the motivation. Now I need some of that. No, for real, though. I had a song on there called Find A Way. The music video is out now on my YouTube page, but that song kind of blew up from that. And... I kind of went in a little break just trying to build some music. That's when my other mixtape came out from my fans. I had a lot of people hitting me up saying, hey, I want some music. So I dropped that, I just kind of emptied the vault. And then, you know, with Understandable, it just was, you know, due time, I needed to drop that. So you told us one of the standout tracks from mm -hmm. one of the takes. What would be uh, for somebody who just wanted to hear um, just like the best, they only have time to hear one song off each tape. You already told us from one of the tapes. Mm -hmm. What's the best representation of each tape as far as just one song for somebody? Okay, so to you from me, definitely find a way. Um, from for my fans, I would say a song in there called My Vibe. It's a definitely an upbeat something type of TikTok song people can make dances to. I've seen a few out there, so shout out to the people making, you know, same videos to my song. And uh, from my album, I would say the song that means the most to me, I would say It's a Journey. Why is that song so important to you? Because it really shows E-Club, you know, from the beginning to the end, I really poured out a lot of emotion into that song about, you know, losing friends, uh, the ups and, ups and downs of the businesses, you know, some of the uh, some of my successes and failures throughout my career, you know, and just a lot of lessons learned and where I'm at now. That's fire. I like yes, that. I like that answer a lot. So, um... That was a very good answer. So we got a, this next tape. You got a whole new tape coming out yes, now. Sir. What's the name of this tape coming up? Have we don't yeah. don't announce anything that ain't already been announced, but um, what's the name of this of this tape if you've already said the name of it? Uh, now or never. Well, why are we choosing now or never? That's where I'm at in my career right now. You know, I've been grinding for uh, ten plus years with this music. Um, it's kind of how I've been feeling. You know, I lost my dad this past March. The music career kind of, he was a big inspiration for me Rest for my music career. Of course. Thank you, thank you. And um, that's kind of how I've been feeling. Like, I was talking to Dot the same day I went, I actually brought Chris up there with me to film a little bit, that same eight hour session. Um, I was talking to him, I'm like, hey man, it's like now I never need to go ahead and record this music, just get off my chest. I've been quiet for a while. And he's like, that's what you should call the tape. I was like, if QC telling me that, go ahead, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna call yeah, it now or never, you know? And, it kind of grew on me because now that's really what I'm feeling. That's my mentality right now. Like, why am I doing this music stuff? Why do I want people to hear me? It's now or never. I'm gonna give it all I got. And yeah. Now that's deep. That's deep. Do we have um, any notable features on this tape, or is it all you? Uh, mostly all me. I do have my artist Javinci. He's uh. Hold on, you got an artist? Yes, sir. <laughs> How? Okay, I didn't know you had an artist. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have a label now? I guess this is important to know. What do, uh, is he under a label of you, or is he just under like? Well, how is this going that you have an artist? Like, okay. what is, how is he your artist? I guess I gotta know. I mean, I straight up say uh, he is a year younger than me. My boy Javinci, he's been grinding. He actually is from Warner Robins. Sorry, from Macon, but he lives in Warner Robins, and uh, he. Just always been a big supporter of me. Is yeah. this like artist development you're helping him out with? Like just, definitely, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. But he, uh, I can honestly say he look up to me. You know, I tell him all the time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Take your flowers, yeah, man. Nah, he man. look up to you. He look up to you. That's my guy, though. I tell him, you know, anything I got going on, be like, hey, come on, come on through. I know he's willing to work for his, and he's trying to grind to make a name for himself. But his mind, you know, helping me out along the way. So, just kind of a partnership. No, that's just, fine. It's not a bad bet attaching yourself to E-Club, so nah, we can't <laughs> knock that. But since I'm going to put you on the spot then for your yes, artist, sir. his name was Javinci, yeah. is that correct? Yes, sir. Let these people know, I need two Javinci songs. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. What's two songs I got to listen to from your guy? Uh, 16. It's out on his SoundCloud page. Uh, Javinci, follow E-Club, you'll definitely see his page underneath mine. But yeah, uh, 16 and um, 
There's a song of me and him that's coming up on my next tape called Ride or Rise, the Alpha Now or Never. That one you definitely gotta check out. That, okay, that okay. So hard. he just gave y'all to check out his artist, most definitely. Um, I didn't even think I asked you this. As far as styles go, mm -hmm. what what would you consider your style to be? Like, I'm just gonna leave that open ended. Okay, uh, like genre or just what? I, Whatever you take from that. I know I left it kind of gray area, but that's because I don't want to yeah. limit what you feel like is the correct answer to that. What, what would okay. you consider your style to be? Um, really, I feel like I'm in my own genre. I call it hip hop, party rock. It's something different. Uh, I'm a mix of a bunch of different genres from all over the world. Military brat, you know, so I heard a lot of different stuff over the world, but I really like to rap with an R&B style and I just love the melodies throughout, so it's kind of a mix. Fact. Let me ask you this. Where is the perfect place to hear your music at? Ooh, I say the perfect place to vibe with my stuff is nightclubs or if you're out at family gatherings or if, you know, really, I say the gym, too. A lot of people, when you put in work, people say they like hearing my song, find a way in the gym and gets them going. Okay, okay. I'm going to say that. I don't know about family gatherings. Are you playing a song you play yeah, for your moms? I don't sure, know. Man. I don't know about, I mean, I don't know about <laughs> Freak Show at the family gatherings. That's why I said the clubs, like at the strip clubs, you got Freak Show. I got a song on my SoundCloud called Beyond Me. I did a spinoff of Tyrese's song, you know, How You Wanna Act Like That. I did, I did a little spinoff of that. That's definitely, you know, a family gathering song. They love that. Um, okay. The kids love Find A Way. And you know, some uh, what pep rallies they've been playing a lot of my songs too. Oh, that's fire! That's fire. So, um, I guess you kind of already answered the question earlier. I was going to ask you, um, what's your intention? Do you want to remain independent or do you want to sign? You already kind of made it clear you want to sign with QC. So, like, I mean, that, that's always been the dream, you know, since I was what 13 or whatever, but you know, um, whatever. I, I want the best outcome, you know, so whatever. I'm not limited to anything or any label, you know. I would definitely like just the betterment of my career, so I'm always open for discussions or anything with anybody. As you should be. Yes, I, got, I tell every artist, man, no matter what you think is for you, mm -hmm. at the very least, I, I stress it a thousand times, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to work, you take the call. Yes, sir. Worst case, you gain nothing from it but experience. At least, at least I know why I stand in the marketplace now. Sure. I know what this label would want for me. Yeah. So when another label call, mm -hmm. I don't have to figure out what my value is. I know where I'm kind of sitting at. Sure. Take the call, even if it's not nobody you necessarily may see yourself forming a partnership with. You never know. Yes, sir. Um, so main <laughs> main question right here. Well, not necessarily the main question. We ain't got to the main question yet, but okay. I guess it could be considered something uh, very important. What's the most meaningful song you created up to this point and why? Mm. Right now, it's a single off of my Now or Never EP. EP yeah. uh, it's called Around the Way. Um, yeah, it pretty much just talks about the last two years of my life kind of summed up in two minutes. Uh, I talk about my dad a lot in there. I talk about uh, some of the obstacles I had to cross from last year, you know, with just making an album, uh, me going through the pandemic, you know, how that changed my life and other people around me. And just, you know, a lot of the crazy stuff that's going on in the world, you know, just. Yeah. I gotta give you credit, of course, uh, with dealing with what you're dealing with, of course, rest in peace to your father. Um, especially, you know, it's real easy. Most people, when they deal with something like that, it's one of two things you're gonna do. Yeah. You're gonna use it as motivation or you're gonna use it as an excuse. Most yeah. people be like, man, I ain't been pushing it because you know my pops passed away, so I just, I've been focused on that. Yeah. You're like, no, it's your song now or never. It sounds like that, that's what made you lock in. That's what got you ready so. to go chase something, you know, for him. You're not using it to yeah. try to explain why you haven't done enough. It's, it seems like motivation to go do even more, which yeah. is which is very dope, man. I can, um, I can, oh, go ahead. I can honestly speak on that. Definitely from my father, uh, this is just, you know, something you can know about me. I, don't, I haven't said this on my Instagram or anything, but uh, the last words I ever heard my pops tell me was a song of mine. He sung one of my songs, and that's how I know, like, he would want me to keep going because he always wanted me to keep going. So it's I took a little while off, but then I was like I said, talking to dot com, I told him that and he was like, you know, you know what you need to do. Yeah, He's you like, know. you ain't gotta, you know, take your time to get right, but get back into the music and that's on that. 
That's, that's I don't know if I want to ask another question. I think that's that's about as strong as you like you can end this. Um, yes, that, now that's 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 deep right there, man. He got me stuttering. I ain't know he was gonna go there with it. You know he was going there with it. No, I ain't know he was going there, man. Um, so this is the open floor part. Like I said, I know I'm entertaining. I know I'm so fun to sit here and talk to. But now nah, let's be real. Everybody comes for a certain reason. So. Um, is there something else you need to say while the floor is yours or something I didn't ask you, something you feel like is important to either yourself as a person or your artistry that hasn't come up yet? This is your chance to make sure all bases get covered for you. Um, yeah, right now, just definitely go check out, you know, my EP coming out soon. You know, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, my YouTube. I got a lot of vlogs, a lot of skits. Now, now what's the name of your YouTube? Is it E-Club? Yeah, E-Club. Okay, I got to say that. I am E-Club, yes. Follow me on Everything, Twitter, all that, every social media platform, I am E Club. Um, yeah, but I got some songs coming out off the Now or Never EP. I got, you know, definitely follow me on my SoundCloud. You might get some leaks or anything that just pop out on any day between now and then. But uh, Do we have an exact date yet on this tape? Uh, yeah, Christmas. Oh, we dropping it on Christmas. Now, let me ask you this. I know you know what you're doing because you're a professional and you know things like that. Is there any worry? as far as the tape goes, dropping it on Christmas where you know attention, you might be competing not necessarily with another artist, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's Christmas, people mm -hmm. with their families, things like that, are you worried maybe that people who would listen to it on release date may not hear it on Christmas, or does that not, you don't really care as long as they hear it eventually? I mean, yo, that, you kind of answered it, yeah, they're gonna hear it eventually, um, you know, with this music, you know, uh, industry I, yeah it's yeah i guess it don't let I me mean, well, let's be real we ain't this ain't drake or nobody like that yeah. where like first day first week sales really matter it's one of those yeah. like hey it's out hopefully y'all listen to it on christmas i think y'all should y'all gonna be at the house chilling anyway everybody yeah. know christmas is only like an hour once everybody yeah. open the gifts yeah, you yeah, yeah. yeah y'all got time to go check out e-club after that while you waiting on if your family if you with yeah. your family waiting on food to cook yeah, you so. know pop you know mm -hmm. i was gonna say pop in you know we oh yeah. i'm gonna pop in now nah, just pull up <laughs> stream the new e-club uh, is it going to be everywhere? Where is it going to be at? Yeah, on all platforms. All platforms. So there's no excuse. Don't tell us you only got Apple Music and not Tidal. <laughs> whatever. It's everywhere. There's no excuse not to hear it. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. And how many songs was on there? Uh, I think eight or ten. So not even a lot of songs. Yeah. Man. I'm going to assume probably a 30 to 40 minute project. Yeah, that. about 45. Like, yeah. yeah, something like that. You got time. Don't make no excuses when it come out. <laughs> um, so, again, anything else you need to state before we close this thing out? Um, well, really, I just want to give my shout out, you know, my flowers to you uh, and to Chris, you know what I'm saying, for just, you know, helping me along my way, too. So, hey, man, I ain't, I ain't lot, did nothing but cut no camera on. Chris deserves some flowers. He the one who put this together. All I did was cut a camera on, man. Oh, man. sure, man. But, but hey, my guy, y'all definitely go check out my guy E Club, man. We got some more footage coming. So, y'all, we're going to take y'all a little bit through yeah. how these sessions went, <laughs> both with dot com and some other people. So, yes, sir. Yeah, y'all yes, definitely stay tuned for that. Fire, fire. Well, if neither one of these great people have nothing else to say, my name is Lawrence Ray, and we are the...